Alicia Cachez joining us. She's a female Bengal tiger at about three years of age. What she'll be doing for us is running from point A to point B, what we call an A to B run. Tigers at full speed, they can run up to 35 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. You compare that to the average person, all the runs about 15 miles per hour. But even when you say the goal, the fastest man on earth broke the world record in the Olympics, he only topped out at 24 miles per hour. Not to mention a tiger can go from a standstill to full speed in just two and a half strides. So their acceleration is pretty good too. And right about now, it looks like Captain Lee is going to get Akasha's attention with some 2% milk. The tigers love the taste of milk, and it's a great food item to get them motivated for various behaviors. And being 2% low fat keeps you a nice trim figure too. That's right. Now that we have our attention center stage, we're going to show you guys a behavior we call a fighting posture. They use this behavior out in the wild to resolve any sorts of disputes they might get into. Rising up on their back hind legs, they use those powerful front forepaws, much like a boxer, try and knock their opponent off balance, thus gaining the advantage. Speaking of fighting, these tigers, they can take down a small deer with one swipe of their paw. I like to see Mike Tyson do that. I'll admit, that's some power. But you know what, Keith, when most people think of the tiger show, they probably think of the circus, where there may be up to a do dozen tigers on stage at one time. Why is Akashi out here by herself? Well, like I said, we like to train natural behaviors, and it's very natural for tigers to be by themselves. The only cats that naturally live together in groups are African lions. All other cats are solitary. They can definitely learn to tolerate one another, and Akasha actually gets along with Nolan in the back. But tigers, they're not really team players. Being solitary also helps the tiger hunt. Living in dense forests and jungles and relying on stealth to approach a target, a solitary hunter is much more efficient in catching prey. The Bengal tigers in the wild will eat anything they can catch, but their primary prey consists of sandbar deer and wild pig. Now speaking of hunting, do tigers ever climb trees when they're going after prey? And if they're so athletic, could they just climb on this fence right here? Ah, see, but tigers, they're actually horrible climbers. Most cats learn to climb trees because they're trying to get away from some kind of predator. Since tigers don't naturally have any predators, they never adapted for climbing. Not to mention a tiger's claws are only about an inch to an inch and a half long, which is not very big compared to the size of that tiger. But tigers can jump 10 feet straight up into the air, so dunking a basketball, no problem for Akasha. We'll have her demonstrate that with a behavior we call a tree hop. If those back springs are ready, it leaps right on up that pole. Gets that piece of meat as a reward, hangs onto those front more claws, and she'll come right back down for a four ball in. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Akasha! Alright folks, right about now I think we're going to show you the behavior our Tigers are discovering thing are world famous for. In just a moment, Akasha will be heading to the deep end of the pool to show us how Tigers dive underwater. That's right, when they do, you'll notice they pull their ears back against their head, open their eyes, find that piece of meat, come right back to the surface. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it again for Akasha! Well, that was pretty impressive behavior. Now why isn't this something we see more often? Well, most zoos and other animal parks, they don't have the facilities to showcase this awesome behavior. Not to mention wildlife documentary photographers, they don't want to be scuba diving in a lake where tigers are swimming. And tigers, they will dive in the wild, especially when going after a prey, but all about as deep as our cool ears. How exactly did you train this behavior, and how did you know that you could? Well, over the years, we noticed our younger cats playing with toys in the pool, and they stick their head under the water. That's where the idea came from. Kuma, one of our older tigers, was the first tiger to be trained to die. We simply rewarded him for sticking his nose in the shallow end of the pool, moved him deeper and deeper until he was diving for pieces of meat. And Odin, one of our white tigers, learned by watching Kuma that he became world famous for this behavior. So far, we've trained five tigers to die, with Akasha being our first female to learn the behavior. That's right, but ladies and gentlemen, we would be remiss if we didn't let you know what you can do to help endangered species like the tiger. One of the best ways to get involved is to support organizations that directly help the tiger. So on the screen above, you can see the websites of two great organizations directly involved in the conservation of this amazing animal. And by donating your time or money, you can make a big difference in the survival of endangered species like the tiger. But how about one more big round of applause for Mishka, Nalan, and Natasha! All right, folks, our trainers will continue to interact with Akasha on stage. And if you guys have any questions, make your way on down to the lower seats. Our trainers will be at the fence to answer any you may have. Any questions, like what's the Tigers' favorite football team? Cincinnati Bengals. Correct. 
What's the Tigers' favorite baseball team? Wait, it's the Detroit Tigers. I said it earlier. What about basketball, though? Maybe the Bobcats? Nah, the Lakers. What? The Tigers go the water. Of course they do. Well, folks, on behalf of our Tiger trainers, Keith, Jonah, and Captain Lee, my name is John, and we hope you continue to have a great rest of your adventure right here at Six Flags.